I'm going to yield back. Generally, from Indiana's recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think Ambassador Eisen was referring to the importance of a vibrant rule of law for democracy. We actually have constitutional republic, not pure democracy, to survive. But <laughs> interestingly enough, when talking about intimidation, threatening, and disinformation, <laughs> I would say, you know, I'm not an attorney. I'm actually a CPA and been involved with finances for a very long time. And I think a lot of Americans should be intimidated and worried if they pay bill to attorney <laughs> and put at legal expense and they can have 34 felony counts for that. That is true intimidation. That is a true what the law is, you know. So that would make anyone very nervous, you know. But, uh, you know, just talking about 2016, I think, Ambassador, you made statements about interference in election. What do you think, uh, from your perspective, to have a Department of Justice under President Obama at that time, and you're probably very familiar with Durham report, Russian through closing the case for Hillary Clinton without doing any proper investigation, and then Russian through to have Russian collusion hoax against Trump without even vetting any of the information. And it turned out to be all lies, right? We have a report on that. So do you think, from your perspective, and then colluding to cover up with Ms. Media, like political and other one, to cover up the story. Doesn't it seem like that could be looking like interference in election in 16? Uh, uh, no, uh, Ms. Sparts, I don't believe that. There was ample evidence to predicate that investigation, including the polling data that was passed from Trump campaign man manager Paul Manafort yeah, but like, to Konstantin Kilim. No, you just, I'm talking about the report, so you think the special prosecutor did not do a good job with he lying the report? I mean, he actually concluded in his report that FBI didn't do its job, and it was outrageous. He was outraged what's happened in FBI. Uh, he, he did uh, a... Well, it seems strange, but let's go further. The same <laughs> situation with Hunter Biden in 2020. The same media, political reporters, have the story that, you know, that, that actually was 50 security, this national security form advisor is a printed story that Hunter Biden laptop doesn't exist and give legs to that store and all media go that and, and he's talking a debate and this is all former, you know, you know, Department of Justice, you know, employees. And then it's going to, you know, in the election, President, you know, Biden is a candidate at the time using it, you know, to cover up and say, oh, it doesn't exist. We know it exists. Doesn't it look strange to you? The Biden Department of Justice empowered a Trump holdover U.S. Attorney David Weiss to prosecute Hunter no, but using I'm just saying, the laptop. laptop. But it's what I'm the just exact saying, the opposite. Story. It's an affirmation in of the way the rule of law in the works. 2020, in 2020, doesn't it look strange that that's a period of election and they have disinformation campaign? The same political reporters are doing again. Doesn't it seem like awfully strange to you? Doesn't it seem like... And it's not interference at all. But I'm not going to probably get an answer because you do have a double standard. And we do have a double standard. And our system of justice is broken. And that's why Americans are intimidated and they're worried about not existing of the rule of law because we have a rule of law, you know, that working, you know, to protect now, you know, the Department of Justice to protect people that they like. This is a political prosecution. And I'm not going to detail with the case, but it would be intimidated for Americans. And it would be very oppressive and tyrannical. And I couldn't believe as an American who grew up in tyrannical country that we would be sitting here and the system of media collusion Don't with me. our justice system. I think that is very, very sad. And I'm, I'm very disappointed that you cannot tell the truth here. I yield back. Would you do, would General Lady yield? I, I yield. I yield I to uh, Ms. Foley, uh, Mr. Ivey uh, basically said what you told the committee about the jury instructions. He disagreed with that strongly, and but was going to let Mr. Eisen answer for you. So I want you to be able to answer for yourself. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I mean that's a, that's sort of the bait and switch that was going on here. That the stuff that he talked about uh, on the uh, prosecutor's response. Um, was a response, and then he flipped the page and saw some of the detail. But that's all a response that talks about the, the first predicate, which, which makes the uh, falsification of business records a felony offense. 
all of that information is about this first predicate. But the interesting thing is that all of that detail on the page that he flipped ended up having nothing to do with the first predicate, but the second predicate, which was the basis for the New York election law offense. So all of that detail was useless because all of that detail was about this and not this. In fact, we didn't even know this was necessary until the judge instructed the jury about this, New York election. That's the point. Right. And that's the point. 